I like how she announces it. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's information session on the Downtown Revitalization Incentives Program. Um, my name is Jen and I work with Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo Economic Development and Tourism on the Startup YMM project. And I'm happy to introduce you to Amanda Heides, who is Senior Manager of Planning and Development with the RMWB. She has a full presentation on the Downtown Revitalization Incentives Program and how it can benefit the businesses in downtown Fort McMurray. So with that, I will hand it over to Amanda to take it from here. Thank you, Jen, and good morning, everyone. And thanks for taking your time to uh, join us today. Um, I will be presenting the Downtown Revitalization Incentives Program. As we go through it, um, if there are specific questions uh, that you wanna ask during the presentation, um, feel free to pop them in the chat. If not, um, we can have uh, a Q&A at the end as well. Uh, so, so what I'll focus on today is an update on our phase one, and we will then move into an update on our phase two. For those of you who aren't so familiar with the program, essentially what it is is um, a series or a set of grants that are being made available to downtown businesses uh, and property owners, mainly commercial um, uh, buildings. And what we're looking at is providing incentives um, for downtown investment that may not have otherwise occurred. Um, we're also looking to revitalize our downtown and through the efforts of both the municipality on some of the, the public stuff like parks and street improvements, um, the private sector is just as important in terms of new investment, um, new tenants, uh, putting some more pride into our, into our private uh, properties in the downtown and looking to um, just overall aesthetically improve the appearance of our downtown, which should also help keep tenants and attract tenants and also attract um, people to go downtown and shop, spend money and have access to services. The phase one, so essentially what had happened was back in the, the summer of, of uh, 2020, so last summer, we had um, put together phase one of this program as a pilot. Uh, we weren't sure how successful it would be, but we knew that we had to try something. And uh, what we decided to do was um, encourage and get a phase one approved by council in the summer. The phase one update, uh, along with phase two, they both align with council strategic plan, and that is to encourage development in the downtown, uh, encourage incentives to update storefronts, and to start looking at business attraction and incentives in the downtown as well. For phase one, it did go from June 29th to December 31st, and it was a pretty quick program. It was six months only. Uh, we had over 200 inquiries and we hosted over 100 pre-application meetings. Overall, we did have 80 applications that were approved. Uh, originally, we anticipated to have about, I think it was seven to 10 um, by the end of December. So we, we certainly out um, succeeded what we thought was gonna be um, the success of the program. At 80 applications, um, we, were, we were quite surprised pleasantly. The phase one grants included facade, interior, patio, beautification, and murals, which are all included in phase two, and we'll get into some of that detail. But the important part here is the municipality committed to uh, about $3.2 million in grant funding to all these businesses, which in return overall equates to over $9.3 million in total project costs going into our downtown. And so for what for us, that is a very positive indicator to show that people are willing to put money into the downtown and take that chance. Um, it also shows us that um, through these investments, we've been able to keep businesses down there and attract new businesses as well. From these grants, the, mo the most popular uh, last year were facade and also the interior grants. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that still stays the same and consistent with phase two. Um, but those certainly were, were the most popular grants at the time. This is just a couple of examples of um, things that have been um, sort of the outcome of these grants. The Easy Term, which is along Franklin Avenue, um, that's, that's an amazing project. Uh, it, it was actually uh, through Startup YMN that these, these property owners were aware of the grant program and took advantage of it quite quickly. Um, and it's definitely a nice asset in our downtown. 
on the bottom left um, is, a, is a clinic that opened up in the downtown as well. They relocated from Timberley and were able to get a nicer, bigger space to, to uh, accommodate their clientele. The Morrison Center uh, is, is well underway now with their facade improvement. If you drive by, you'll see it. Uh, it looks great. And also um, there's a mural that will start uh, near the superstore at the, uh, the Union building there. And these are just a couple of examples. Um, there's plenty more, but it just showcases some of the work that has been done through phase one. Moving into phase two, um, the objectives really are similar. Um, we we want to retain existing businesses in the downtown, encourage new ones to come down. Um, we would like to see new features and amenities that, that do create some interest and uh, vibrancy. Um, we want we want our downtown to be a place where people want to spend time, you know, more, more than just that quick trip or driving right past it. Um, it would certainly would be nice for all of our efforts to amount to a downtown where people want to go down in the evenings or weekends or during the day to shop. We also would like to see through this program enhancing the aesthetic qualities of our downtown and just improving the general, general um, overall character, the vibe, the feel, how, how it looks. And also to, to leverage public funding to catalyze um, private investment. So hopefully through this, we start seeing private investment, which, which we did in, in phase one, um, over $9 million of overall investment into the downtown. This is a, a quick um, boundary outline of, of all the properties that would be eligible um, or the within the downtown boundary. So if you are, um, if you are interested in the program, you must fit within this red boundary within the downtown. So basically the sky all the way out to uh, Longboat Landing. Some of the quick highlights, um, you must be located downtown. You must be in an existing building. Um, it can't be a new building or a new addition to a building. It must be an existing property. Uh, if you are a home business, you're, you are not eligible. If you are a government building, uh, you are not eligible unless you are a private, um, private business within the government building. So an example of that could be um, the Shreka's restaurant. That building is owned by the municipality, but they are a private tenant, so she would be eligible. Flood restoration and re remediation work is not eligible. So if you're fixing um, something that was damaged in the flood, it's not eligible. However, if your property was damaged during the flood, you can still apply for the program if you are doing improvements or if you're making any changes. Um, you, you, it's just that you're not allowed to fix something that was damaged by the flood, basically. And if you participated in phase one and were approved, um, you cannot apply for the same grant in phase two. If you were interested in a different type of grant in phase two, you, you would be able to do that. Um, and moving on to the next slide here. Some other highlights include um, the fact that this is a first come, first serve basis. Um, there is a finite amount of money available for the program, so it is first come, first serve. These are reimbursements, so the municipality is not giving the money up front. Um, the property owner or business owner does their improvements, and once those are complete, they um, submit for their reimbursement at the end. Uh, for the most part, we're not retroactively paying for um, improvements that were made. So an example is if you've already done an improvement and did not participate in the program or apply and were approved, you cannot go in and ask for your money um, after the fact. There are a couple of uh, exceptions here um, and they're small ones. So patio and beautification grant, um, if, if you did incur costs, after April 1st and you did not apply for the program, we are looking at um, uh, giving monies back um, for, for, for eligible costs. So that, that is one exception there. Professional fees, um, if, you're, if you do need a professional service in order to apply for a grant, if you're working on some sort of drawing or layout or, or plans and you're incurring costs before the application is submitted, uh, we, would, we would consider um, reimbursing that if you were if you are approved through the process. Projects must meet the program guidelines and design standards. Projects must be completed within 12 months, so it does give you quite some time. And uh, you have to pay the contractors yourself, not the municipality. 
the uh, phase two really some of the if you were familiar with phase one some of the changes that we made um, we extended the program so the program now goes until March of 2022 and you do have a full year so technically if you were approved in March of 2022 you have till March of 2023 to complete um, our first program was only six months we have also um, we're requiring fewer contractor estimates um, so there's so for those grants that require contractor estimates um, we've, we've minimized it to two uh, we also have a um, improvements to our mural grant, which I'll explain later on. We've introduced our premises grant, um, which is a property improvement grant, really. Apartment buildings are now eligible. That was not the case in phase one. So if you are an apartment building or if you know of apartment building um, property management companies who are interested in improving their property, they are eligible for the premises improvement and for the uh, facade improvement. And we've also streamlined some of our incentives through one email address only, being incentives at rmwb.ca. So if there's any questions that you have when you send the application in, like that is your, your go-to email and it is monitored um, all the time. Facade improvement grant, um, we, what we've done is from the, from the phase one, it was quite a comprehensive grant that required quite a lot of improvements to be eligible. We decided to also include more of a simple stream within that. It, it does have a le less funding, but it gives property owners more of a, a choice and flexibility on some of their facade improvements. Um, we also we kept the interior improvement grants. That was our most popular one. We kept the patio grant, uh, the beautification projects and murals grant um, has some tweaks to it or improvements, but we did keep it. And our premises improvement grant is completely new. So all in all for phase two, uh, if you are a downtown business uh, or property owner or someone who's interested in going into the downtown, you do have um, access to five basic uh, grants. Uh, and also some of these grants have some of their own little, um, so for example, facade has sort of two, two streams within it. The beautification has two streams within it, including the murals. So there's quite a no number of grants that care that, that um, cover a wide variety of expenses. Just to get into more detail, um, if you are interested in the grant program, I'll walk you through all these grants individually so you understand each type of grant and also what is eligible um, and how much money uh, you're entitled to under all these grants. So for our facade improvement grant, it is a $25,000 value if you are going through the, um, the simple facade improvement. It is a $75,000 value if you're going through the comprehensive um, improvement. The thing to remember here though, they're matching grants. So for example, if you put in $50,000 to um, the simple facade improvement, the, munis the municipality reimburses the 25,000. If you um, are more interested in the comprehensive and you want to spend the full value of 150,000, the municipality will reimburse you 50% uh, to 75,000. You do not have to spend um, upwards of that. If you were interested in spending 20,000, the municipality would um, reimburse you 10,000. So it's 50% up until uh, 25,000 or 75,000 max. And of course, that's if you got approved through the grant um, beforehand. Uh, this facade improvement is geared towards commercial, institutional, mixed use, and apartment buildings. And uh, the simple facade improvement, it only requires you to do one element or more on the outside. For the comprehensive, it requires you to do four elements or more on the outside. Some of the elements might include improvements to accessibility, um, if, you know, maybe a wheelchair uh, ramp, uh, if you're looking at guardrails, um, buttons type of doors, architectural features, awnings and canopies, building materials, lighting, reconfigured entrances and storefronts, seasonal elements, signage, um, windows. Those are all examples of, of things that you can improve as part of the facade. Uh, eligible work and costs um, include general costs for all grants. Um, so there, there may be some professional fees that are associated with that. Uh, if, if you're interested in doing facade cleaning or power washing, painting and new cladding, 
uh, restored exterior arch architecture or features, uh, windows, doors, brickwork. If you're interested in establishing new or reconfigured entrances or storefronts, new or replaced uh, awnings and canopies, um, new uh, or replacement of anything to do with accessibility, as I mentioned earlier, new signage, uh, flower pots, window boxes, hanging baskets, and similar items. So there's there's quite a lot of flexibility in this grant. And keeping in mind, if you go for the simple route, you only have to do one improvement. If you go through the comprehensive, there's four, but there is more money that you um, have access to if you go through the comprehensive. For the interior improvement grant, that's obviously everything inside the building. Uh, we are allowing two of those grants uh, per building if there's multiple tenants. Uh, if there's a single tenant only in a building, they only have access to the one interior grant. So when you see the range here between 50,000 to 100,000, basically it's 50,000 for one grant or 100,000 for two grants. And again, this is a matching program up to these points. So if, for example, um, you did an interior improvement of $100,000, the municipality um, reimburses the $50,000. This is geared towards commercial, institutional, and mixed use, not apartment buildings. This is only for um, commercial, institutional, and mixed use buildings. Eligible work includes uh, reconfiguring an existing unit. Um, so if you're changing up uh, walls or layout, that would be an eligible cost. Accessibility, again, fire, electrical, plumbing upgrades, uh, HVAC upgrades, uh, or even if there are new, new, completely new systems, energy efficiency upgrades, which can also include uh, new doors and windows, and general updates. This is, this is all newly um, included, which includes painting, drywall, flooring, ceilings, interior doors, trims, uh, millwork, fit and fixed cabinetry and countertops. So, this one does offer a lot of flexibility. It's great if um, you're an existing tenant and want to improve your space or expand into a bigger space within the building. It's great if you're trying to attract a new tenants to come into your building. Uh, so it does have quite a lot of flexibility. The patio grant um, is 75% cost recovery. So that is up to 15,000. So if you, for example, spent $40,000 on your patio, uh, you'll get 75% back up until the $15,000 mark. If you only want to spend um, $1,000, uh, you'd still be eligible for 75% reimbursement, so say $750. This is geared to us uh, food and service and uh, those, those establishments that are at the ground level. And here, um, what we're looking for is more of a permanent patio um, and a high quality type of, of patio, something that isn't, um, you know, tarps and uh, construction fencing is an example. That's not something we're looking for here. We're looking for more um, aesthetically pleasing and permanent type patios. Eligible works under this one include paving, decking, uh, partitions, decorative fencing, any weather protection, patio furniture, including heating, planters, containers, uh, any uh, corresponding landscaping for the patio. We're also looking to include lighting, patio signage, including sandwich boards, seasonal or modular structures for the patio, temporary boardwalks, uh, and features that provide the barrier-free access. So this, again, is a very flexible grant for the patio. Not to confuse things, there is a regional wide uh, program right now that, that mostly was in, uh, in, in, in response to COVID-19. Aside from the downtown patio grant, the municipality has an entirely separate program that's also available to food and beverage establishments, whereby they're reimbursing up to $5,000 of costs associated with anything to do with the patio, um, and it's 100% reimbursed. Uh, if, if you are a food and beverage establishment downtown, you have to pick between either or. You can't apply for both. But this is a good one. The regional one is a good one if, uh, if you guys know of anyone who does own uh, any food and beverage in the region. And that could even include um, a restaurant that didn't have a patio before COVID. It can also include a convenience store that sells food and beverage if they want to have a few uh, chairs outside. So just something that's good for our community to be aware of. 
The beautification grant uh, is geared towards commercial, institutional, and mixed use. It is a $1,500 um, grant and it's 50% matching. So it's a smaller one, but it's great for curbside appeal for those businesses that are at ground level. And some of the things that um, could be included here include storefront merchandise supply, uh, displays, storefront treatment to windows and glass. So that's you know inside. Storefront lighting, uh, such as holiday string lights, temporary artwork and installations, seasonal planters, hanging baskets, a board signs or sandwich board signs, replacement of um, the fascia sign, so the sign above of, above the store unit, and benches or similar seating and bike racks. So again, quick. This stuff is quick um, things that people can do to improve their their uh, curbside appeal. And this one, you don't have to apply in advance um, to start incurring costs. You can actually incur cost uh, April first onwards and then submit for your uh, reimbursement and your application. The murals grant also changed. Um, the, the, our council in, in increased it to 75% cost recovery. So it is 75% cost recovery up until the $30,000 mark. And the, the, uh, the, this is geared towards commercial institutional mixed use buildings and projects are to be completed by a local artist. Um, we're hoping that this one will get some uptake on some of our blank walls. We, we do have quite a lot in the downtown and that negative space, uh, if we could get some public art, these murals in there, that, that would be um, something that would definitely improve our downtown. Eligible work includes the, the artwork itself, including the, the supplies and the materials, any artist fees, including the design or label, labor. If, um, if there's any travel involved in accommodation, um, that's something that we would also consider. And site preparation, including uh, garbage removal, is also an eligible cost. Lastly, I know, I know I've been talking a lot, there's a lot of detail. Uh, the last one is the premises improvement grant, which is completely new. And this one is an exciting one for us um, because it also includes mixed use, um, or sorry, it also includes apartment buildings in addition to mixed use commercial and institutional properties. Um, here, it does range, the, the grant ranges between 10 and $40,000 per property, and it is uh, a 50% matching grant as well. So if 80,000, if, if they were eligible for the 40,000, um, they, they, that would be a, an $80,000 uh, investment and they get reimbursed the 40,000, whatever the 50% is basically, to a maximum of 10 to 40,000. Uh, eligible working costs include uh, new or replacement sidewalks, pathways, hard surfaces, parking lot resurfacing and line painting, repairing or replacing or improving driveways, uh, site grading and drainage improvements, erosion control measures, fences, handrails, guardrails, um, low impact development or green infrastructure, sustainable transportation infrastructure, wayfinding and, and directional signage, uh, soft landscaping, benches and waste recycling bins, lighting and artwork. So again, a very flexible grant. Um, it's really put in place to help improve uh, the actual properties that we see downtown that do need some, some work, uh, especially asphalt. It seems that every parking lot here is uh, a mine of, of, of uh, holes that we need to, of, to divert when we go shopping downtown. So at the minimum, it would definitely be nice to have improved uh, parking parking lots. Now, in terms of the application process, uh, there's sort of a um, few steps that are pretty simple. First is the actual application. So we encourage everybody to reach out and to book a pre-application meeting. At this meeting, it's a really good time for you to ask questions. It's a good time for our planners to ask questions there could be things that you're thinking of um, that are not covered. There could be things you're not thinking of that could be covered. So it's a good brainstorm as well to, to look at what overall you're trying to improve and what you're trying to do on your site. Um, sometimes people walk away understanding um, that they're eligible for other costs through other grants, for example. Uh, it also gets everybody on the same page before the application goes in. And it helps prepare you to know exactly what's expected in the application and to, to make that um, quite quick and, and simple as possible. Uh, it's also a great time um, to understand which documents you need to gather for, for the application. Then you submit it, the team reviews it, makes their decision, 
and then uh, an agreement is offered and signed on both ends if it was accepted and you move into your improvement or your construction or your purchasing of supplies and materials depending on on your grant and once it is complete once your project is complete you will then get your um, your uh, money reimbursed based on receipts and, and proof that um, the project has been completed and sometimes that may involve um, a site visit. The pre-application meetings, like I said, I can't underestimate these. These are strongly recommended. Um, we see the success rate of people who go through a pre-application meeting. They're substantially more successful in getting their application approved and um, things move a lot quicker if you do that meeting. Uh, like I said, here you learn about the program, you confirm your eligibility, um, and you're getting personalized advice as well. And uh, also one thing to keep in mind, virtual meetings are an option. You do not have to be in the region. There's a lot of property owners who don't live here, uh, so there's no need to um, come into the region for the meeting. We can do it virtually. And even if you live here locally, we can still do it virtually. Next steps. Um, I already went through all these pieces, so there's um, in terms of the actual application, um, but what we're doing right now as a whole for the program, we're in the in the midst of um, reimbursing phase one applicants. We're currently meeting with phase two applicants, and um, we're now starting to work more on the advertising and the promotion of phase two. And of course, we're always looking at monitoring the program and, and looking at um, are there things that we need to change? Are there new types of grants that we need to start considering for the downtown? Um, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can for, for the revitalization and also to support businesses in the downtown. Um, this email here is a really important one for you to jot down, incentives at rmwb.ca. Um, I'm sure Jen will be sending out this presentation afterwards as well, um, but also, all of the information that I went through can be found in even more detail on our website at rmwb.ca forward slash incentives. If there's any questions that you have, um, you can feel free to email that at that address that I shared with you as well. Um, we certainly want to encourage people to be um, participating in the program. So no question is too little or, or, or too dumb. They're all uh, relevant questions and we're more than happy to have the conversations with you. That brings us to the end of the presentation. Thanks for listening and uh, hopefully there's some questions that we can address. Over to you, Jen. Awesome, thanks so much, Amanda. Uh, that was a lot of good information in there, I think. Um, I don't see any questions. I did have a question about sending out the recorded version. Um, and yes, you already answered that. Um, we will be sending out the recorded version to the email addresses that have been provided. Um, I'm just gonna open up the chat again and see if there's anything in there. I don't see anything so far. Um, does anyone have any questions that they wanted to, wanted to voice right now? Um, I believe Amanda did provide information as well on contact information, so um, you can, of course, send information or send questions to the team. Uh, Julieta says or asks, uh, "What is the deadline?" Um, so the, the the program itself uh, ends in March of 2022, so next year. That would be the closed closing date of our um, of when we're accepting applications. You'd have to have it in by March of next year, so you do have quite some time. Awesome. Thanks so much, Amanda. Anyone else have any questions that they have uh, top of mind right now? And uh, what we can do as well is uh, when I send out the recording, I can um, make sure that we provide um, information to uh, the incentives email um, to send questions to and all of that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, and the main thing too is um, even if there's people who are part of this call that have very specific questions, feel free to pop them in um, the chat. Uh, you, you really, it doesn't matter what level of detail you're at, um, we can answer those. Also, if you are, are aware of any businesses or any business owners or people who are just potentially exploring locations on, on where to locate, 
uh, word of mouth is the biggest thing for us and and at least getting people in the know as to there is money available um, for business in the downtown and um, just I, I you know there's been a few instances where businesses have gone ahead and and, and invested um, some time and energy and money into their internal um, upgrades or even exterior and they're not eligible because I didn't apply and it's just pains us to see that because the program's in place for a reason it is to support our business community and to help encourage um, businesses that are down there now to stay potentially grow or even attract new business into the downtown like that's this is a program we want people to use and, and, and to access so if you know of anybody who owns business downtown or, or looking please spread the word Yes, and you can definitely uh, also share the recording. I think we'll, uh, I'll probably just share the, the raw Zoom recording, um, but we'll put it also on like our Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo Economic Development and Tourism uh, YouTube as well. And then um, you can access it from there too, once that's Perfect. available. Um, I do see there's a couple of people here from the, our, our, our real estate industry. Um, even, you know, if, if you, with clients, um, I, I do see this as a perk in, in attracting clients to the downtown and something for them to be aware of as well. And feel free to um, pass along our contact information to your clients. You're not bothering us. Um, we we want to have these conversations and we want to explain how the program works with people and what they're eligible for. So please, uh, by all means, share, share, share this and our contact as well. Okay. All right, well, fantastic. Yeah, if there isn't any questions, then uh, we will close. Oh, we do have another one. Um, how would I know if my building is allowed to make exterior improvements such as adding a patio? So if there, if your building, I don't know which building you're in, but if your building has um, a food and beverage establishment, um, that would be the base basic eligibility there. Um, in terms of city permitting, um, you could reach out to us at that same email address and send us at uh, rmwb.ca and we can certainly look into um, where you want to put the patio. Um, the planning and development department is very supportive of patios right now, especially given everything that's happened with um, COVID um, and in the downtown we want to encourage them. So. You know, in, in the past years back, it may have been very difficult to get patios. Um, we most certainly are, are encouraging them. Uh, so if, if the question is about uh, permitting wise, we can also help you with that. The planning and development department is, is the department behind this whole grant program. Uh, so the people who you're meeting in the pre-application meeting are the planners. Um, they're on this call right now, namely being uh, uh, Jennifer, Susan and Nabil, I believe are here. Um, but they also have that uh, knowledge as to the actual permitting process too. So they can help you out with that. Um, one thing I should mention um, while we're talking about patios, on a regional basis, because of COVID-19, the municipality actually um, has actually created a lot of exceptions for patios that normally we would not. So for this summer, um, we're allowing a lot of temporary patios to exist in our region without the typical permitting um, processes. Uh, you do have to reach out to planning before you go ahead and, and locate a patio, but it, if it is a short-term thing that you're thinking about, it, it might even be easier than you think it is. I'm just gonna write the, um, the link in here for you guys. Um, keep in mind that is on a regional basis. So uh, if you go onto that link, you'll see that easy process um, link. And you'll also see the, um, the regional patio incentive, which is $5,000, 100% reimbursed. Um, you don't have to apply for it. All you need to do is spend the money on your improving your patio. You upload a bunch of receipts and they will get their money back up to 5,000. There has not been that much uptake on that program yet. Um, so I'm just, it's not, it's not specific to downtown. People who are in downtown are eligible, but it's across the region. and it is if you sell food and beverage, you don't even have to be a restaurant. If you are um, even something like, a, like I said, a, a convenience store, you, you would be eligible. Co coffee shops, um, anyone who's selling food and beverage is eligible for that. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Amanda. Yeah, that is, that is a really good one. 
I, I, I'm finding myself uh, whenever I go in places now, I'm like, hey, you know, you're eligible for $5,000. I'm trying to tell everybody because even if you put, you know, one chair and a couple, uh, a couple of chairs on one table outside your front door, like that's something, you know, it encourages people to sit down and enjoy an ice cream or whatever the case is. Yeah. And then come back in and get something else. Exactly. Afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it all supports business. So it's important. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't see any other questions in here. Did that answer your question, um, Alana? Okay, perfect. She says it does. Uh, lastly, you know, I, in phase one, I think that business owners felt a little um, like panicked to to apply for the program because it was a shorter window. And also, you know, we were coming outside the flood. The pandemic was very new. Um, the economy is down, which, you know, we're kind of are in the same scenario, but at least with the program having that extension until next year, you've got some time to think in terms of your budget and where you want to spend your money and to make your, your decisions more strategically. Um, so just know that you don't have to, you know, rush to get an application in, in the next couple of months. Uh, it is available throughout the next year, so it does give you some time. Uh, lastly, I should also mention um, Community Futures is participating in this program. So if you do not have access to traditional funding through through the banks and you, you've been declined for whatever reason, Community Futures is a local um, business support organization who are very aware of this, this, this grant program and have actually um, created uh, an ability for those people wanting to participate in the program who cannot get um, uh, traditional banking so it is, is an option for, for those of you who um, cannot get uh, monies from the bank to participate. They do have, Community Futures does have their own process on how you access that money, but it is an option and they're very familiar with the program. Yeah, and I just put the link to their website in the chat here too, so you can access that um, easily there. Lastly, um, since we have a little bit of time, uh, I know that this was not, not on the agenda, but in terms of downtown revitalization, um, we heard it again last night during council, it is definitely a priority for the region and for our, our municipal council and hopefully the new, the new council that will be elected in the fall. Um, but there are other things happening in the downtown aside from this grant program. The waterfront revitalization program is well underway and um, it is basically a, a whole, a whole redevelopment or whole revitalization of our waterfront from the Athabasca uh, Bridge all the way down to the Horse Pasture Park in Waterways. It is an active um, public engagement that's actually happening right now. If there's anyone from comms that can add our link to the box, or I, I can find it before we get out, but there's an online survey if you're interested in taking it. Um, but the main thing I wanna get across there is the municipality is putting quite a lot of money into creating better trail connections, more parks and playgrounds, and more, more um, interactive things for people to participate in along the waterfront areas for, for more gatherings and outdoor events, spaces that work better for, um, for our community groups. And so it, it, it's sort of a, um, a layered approach with downtown. Like we, we do have this um, incentive program and layered on that is the waterfront revitalization um, the, the new park that's being constructed right now at the Franklin and Main intersection, uh, that's also part of downtown revitalization. And also um, just seeing things happening in the downtown, such as the new continuing care facility opening up. There's more activity happening along Franklin Avenue in terms of retail. Uh, we, we are trying to address downtown through different avenues. Um, there's conversations happening around improving security and, and, and health and safety in the downtown right now. Um, the planning and development department is, is working on an area redevelopment plan for the downtown as well. So there is a lot of focus happening there and hopefully over time we'll start seeing it, it shift into a place where people wanna spend time and businesses want to locate as well. Perfect. And I did want to just add, we don't have any date set, but there will be um, a couple more sessions coming probably in September will be the next one. 
um, just to provide information as uh, if the program changes at all or um, updates to it. So um, there will be more information coming out, but uh, this one will probably be the last one before summer. So especially for those patios, you might wanna get started on that right now and uh, definitely contact the ladies at the RMWB. Thanks everybody, I appreciate your time. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.